What is going on everybody? This is Stubbs here from Retro Handhelds and tonight we're going to take a look at the One X Player 2 Pro. Uh, this is a giant handheld that has been sent to us over from Geek Buying. So stay tuned. Today's going to be a really short live stream, short by, I, by our standards anyways. Uh, <laughs> uh, stay tuned for Zoo's full review and his mini following uh, videos. He's very excited for this one. Uh, this is a 7840U handheld. It looks much like the Lenovo Legion Go that's launching at the end of this month. Uh, but I've never had a handheld this large in my house before. So uh, we're going to compare it against the Steam Deck real quick, look at ergonomics, compare it against the ROG Ally, and uh, we're going to kind of skip on emulation testing and most game testing. I really want to focus on the ergonomics test out the screen, test out the speakers, the feel, how heavy it is, can it play solitaire at 60 FPS, but uh, let's move on to this unboxing. And I hope you're all having an awesome night out there. If you're watching this on demand later, an awesome whatever time of the day or night it is for you. All righty. <laughs> Only a three hour stream confirmed. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna attempt to pull off a one hour impression live stream and skip the whole blue, but it's all it's all depending on how fast Steam can download a few of these games. I did preload a few things to make it faster, but uh, we'll kind of see. Yeah, you know, Solitaire. It's tough to maintain a solid sixty. The latest generation of Solitaire is really upping it with those anti-aliasing and the ray tracing options that Microsoft added in. So uh, yeah, One X Player. This is a giant box. And my hands are pretty large to begin with, so... Enjoy my time anywhere, anytime. Hell yeah. This came in plastic wrap. This is a faux unboxing. That's why there is dust. It's this neat little doop pulls up. There she goes. They say you can use this as a tablet and a laptop as well. Uh, is she thick and uh, she heavy? They claim to have magnets on the sides. In my testing, uh, I, I, that appears to be a falsehood, but uh, and we'll take another look at that. We have this situation. I'm the manual. Hi, manual. I'm the stubs. Very good. All good information. Eh, keep it nice for Zoo. I don't want to mess it up. Oh, I did a little crack there. Sorry, Zoo. Don't, don't be mad. Don't be mad in. Eh. All right, so here's the controllers. They are very, very lightweight in compared to the heftness of that thing. Here you have, it didn't say hull joysticks. It said they had eSports joysticks. So they're not concave. So that's one issue I have with them, but they're, they're comfortable and they're in a nice spot. The D-pad feels really good. It is a rubber membrane connection, really good pivot there. And the face buttons are very serviceable. Not too shallow and not too tall. Also rubber membrane, they feel good. L1 and R1 are a soft, quiet, clicky, I like that. L2 and R2 are kind of a cheap feeling. It almost feels like a like an iPega L2 and R2. And not my favorite shoulder button so far. And they kind of they kind of whine as they as they depress just a little bit. Can hear on the mic. Not too bad. They're not grinding or anything, but eh, I've seen better there. This connection that connects it to the tablet is supposedly magnetic, but it's not. It's a it's a rail system like the Nintendo Switch, meaning there's going to be just a little bit of wobble. <laughs> Hard boiled esports overhaul. Yeah, esports joysticks take all today, man. So you click it on like. Doop and click it on like dip. Okay. Yeah. As you can see, 
I don't have it cropped in on my pretty yellow backdrop because uh, the handheld wouldn't fit on screen otherwise. Yeah, so this is a strange combination to me. Um, you have very lightweight left and right sides with a very, very heavy center, just the tiniest bit of wiggle. Just a little bit, but not bad. And one thing that's cool is you have a kickstand here. Now, One X Player is a one of the brands, but under the One Netbook branch, they've made laptops. Uh, you also know them because they made the One X Fly, an awesome 7840U compact handheld, a bit more on the budget side. Well, it was. Uh, now it's full price. Uh, these have Harman Cardone speakers. It has that AMD Ryzen 7 7840U handheld. If you want to get these controllers out, you just push down there. They come right out. Not held together by magnets, so got to give it to uh, got to give it to my boy, the Pimax Portal, for the best magnets still of 2023. Look at that magnet connection. That's a magnet connection, man. Can't beat those magnets. You, you can you can beat every, every everything else on this though, pretty much. Uh, as far as input outputs, you got your micro SD card slot. I always like it when they include those. That's up to two terabytes. You have a USB A port, a charging USB C port, a 3.5 inch headphone jack, a button that launches the uh, the gaming control center software, the the One X player control center. You have two function buttons here. One of them launches the virtual keyboard. The other one, I believe, closes a window. And then you have the power button. Down below, you have another USB-C port, which is nice. They have a little connector here, so you can attach uh, something like a, a uh, keyboard and a touchpad. So you can buy separate accessories and it can attach there. You have another USB-C. Kickstand again, really, really nice to have. You have an Xbox button here, so that's a dedicated Microsoft Xbox button that'll bring up that toolbar. Swap windows. You have an LED light on and off and a quick mouse keyboard selector that swaps between modes. Up here, you got, of course, the vent. We'll take a good sniff there and we'll do an input mouthfeel. Well, we won't do a mouthfeel for Zeus' sake. And then you have an air intake there. So. It stayed pretty cool when I was just loading up Steam and everything, so we're gonna see what it does with the game. Let's turn it on. Now this one is the one terabyte, 32 gigabyte model. Let's get this out of here. And there's add-ons for this. You can get, uh, we'll take a look in a little while, but you can get an attachment that lets you combine these two things and put them into like a, a Switch Pro controller mode style thing where you, it has a has a middle piece, pop that together, then you have a standalone mode if you want to dock this to your TV or something or turn it into a, uh... whew, that is a thick boy. <laughs> now we're going to enter my pin off screen tonight. You're greeted by Windows 11. I've told it to start Steam in big picture mode. Oh, oh, Zoo's gonna allow the mouthfeel. I'll wipe it down for you, Zoo. All right. Don't turn this into a GIF, please. Citrusy, I have to say, with notes and a notes of oak. Uh, is that a, is that a thing? It's like it's been barrel aged. It kind of has a, a a musk to it. Like I've been to the forest, but a chemical forest. If that makes sense. It's wider. It's kind of like a cheeseburger kind of feel. If you get it from this side here, yeah. Um, sorry, geek buying. I, I do this on all of, of of our of our videos. It's just part of our review process. We are professionals, of course. Let's do a little. Sniffy poo. Whew, that's chemically. 
That is a very chemical. Oof. I need to probably go to the doctor now. That's not good. All right, back over here. First of all, a ranger situation. What should we put on screen today? Should we put Mr. Chicken? Let's see Mr. Chicken. I just don't know where to put my spam. That's the problem. And I guess the spam can go here. Mew Mini. They have a new Mew Onion OS 4.2 out today. It's fun. Okay, so what do we got installed? Well, we'll go over that in a minute. I need to wait for one more game to finish downloading. Um, so the shell, I like it. This is a nice matte plastic. I don't foresee a lot of fingerprints, at least on the white skew. There's a black skew as well. We'll take a look at the website in a little bit. It does have LED lighting around the ring. See this orange lighting. And you can configure that by going to the game software, which should be this button. There it is. Let's zoom in. So fan mode defaults to 50%. And use some TDP options here, some TDP controls, four watts all the way up to 30 watts. I'm gonna keep it in that uh, 15 watt range. Should be nice. If you wanna bring up your keyboard, you do it up here. That second button there. Uh, this is a solitaire beast, and also I found it to be great for Microsoft Office spreadsheets. So if we load up one of my favorite workbooks. This can actually handle all 40,000 rows of Excel, 43,000 to be specific, that's the upper limit. Uh, you could go to town on this. I mean, the 7840U is a beast as far as computing, as far as spreadsheeting goes. You can do a lot of formulas. You can calculate uh, gravity. You can calculate different things. You can use Bing AI uh, to go out and create algorithms and formulas. You can um, take you can take over a small country uh, with this handheld with the power of Microsoft Excel. Unfortunately, it's a little cumbersome because it's Windows on a handheld without a dedicated keyboard. So you get that get that keyboard laptop attachment and it'll sit and I right like that and you got the little oop, kickstand okay so you can type like this enter your formulas do a little uh oh my god not that yeah here's your keyboard oh god uh uh hi zoo you can that's not a formula, but if you're smart with math, you know, you know, eight uh, plus, uh, you know, this, it's a little cumbersome while the power is there. I really would recommend a keyboard of some sort. This just isn't the ideal use case for Excel. Let's do something a little more powerful. Microsoft Solitaire. Let's get the uh, on screen. Really? Where'd we go here? So we're barely taxing the CPU at 5% here. GPU's at 10%, VRAM's at 20, RAM's at 20, FPS solid 60. No problem. Let's see if we can get those animations going. Yeah, I know I'm joking around a little bit, but the 7840U, you have seen this, what it can do. This thing is an absolute monster with everything you throw at it. Baldur's Gate, uh, Counter-Strike, 
the new Diablo 4 that just hit, hit Steam, I believe today, it really should not be an issue. So that's that's all well and good. And if we do some comparisons, hey Ben, can we zoom that out? No, not in, out, out. Oh, it's okay, it's all right. Yes, you can have dinner tonight, it's fine. If we take a look at the Steam Deck. Well, physically, it doesn't look that much bigger than the Steam Deck. It feels considerably bigger. The Steam Deck is pretty light. You can one-hand it. This, you can definitely one-hand too, but you're kind of maybe a little bit unsteady, a little bit uneasy about that. Not really sure about that. I'm not going to feel confident one-handing that while I'm taking care of a child in the other. Now, Joey, I'm going to, Joey, I'm going to need you to, to calm down out there. Uh, my desk, his tech dweeb's desk is orange and he has a much nicer camera with nice, lots of uh, little sprinklings. This is basically what's left over from the last time we were on the podcast together. I have not moved anything. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. You know, I like getting swole ghost sauce and that's what I'm doing here today with the one X player two pro. Yeah, TechTweeb's taking over the podcast, supposedly. There's been a coup. Uh, there's been a lot of battles, but I took over the Discord again today back from Zoo, so that was good. You know what? Shots fired, Zoo, that's a fair assessment. Only one of you can talk about Fire Emblem. Okay, so this... Let's look at the sizes here. This is an 8.4-inch screen. It is a 2.5K, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, IPS. The colors look really nice. It's not as vibrant to me as the ROG Ally screen though. Better than the Steam Deck, I will say that. But if we get the Ally here, then we're really gonna get a comparison stew going. The Ally is a fair bit smaller. Ergonomics on the Ally are solid. This is definitely lightweight. Feels very small, feels compact and pocketable almost in comparison to this. This is not gonna go into your pocket. No, no, no. But I like the screen on the on the on the ally just a bit better. Well, this is a bigger screen, and that is really nice. Of course, it's it's touch enabled and all that. get your weather reports. Windows on a handheld still bugs me, I gotta be honest. It's not the most intuitive. ROG Ally does it a little bit better. Steam Deck, of course, is running Linux and has a nice Steam UI that you interact with. So I think having this start in Steam Big Picture mode is probably your best bet. Also, as far as streaming goes, this does have Wi-Fi 6E, which is very impressive. So if you have that Wi-Fi 6E network, that's going to be good. It has DDR5 RAM running at, I believe, 7,500 megahertz, which is absolutely crazy. I think the Ionia Kuhn is a little bit bigger than this, though. And uh, I can't wait to get my hands on the Lenovo Legion Go when it comes out on Best Buy at the end of this month. And we're going to take a look at that because the design on this looks oddly, strangely, exactly the same to that. I know the, the angles are a little different and everything, but I mean, it looks the same. Controllers seem the same. It seems like they, well, maybe a little clone of each other. Okay. I'm going to look at the, uh, the specs real quick, like... So I know you all love those tech specs. We'll go through it really fast though. It's 
in was sent to us from Geek Buying for review. All views and opinions are our own. Uh, Zoo will be making a full review video, so stay tuned for that. This is going to be a pretty brief live stream by our standards. So here's that uh, that controller attachment. I wish they included this with the unit. It seems like if you're spending, what is it, $1,200? We're going to have some coupons we're going to add in, but if you're spending over a thousand dollars already, I feel like something like this, just a simple, just a simple insert really should be included. That's $35. You have storage back for 20. Here's the magnetic keyboard. This is interesting to me. I've been looking for an all in one handheld laptop phone. And this is definitely a contender that could be your all in one device. If you want it to be, it's a beast of a, of a machine. And there's that snap on dealy there and which one do we want to look at they have some different options some european and us options which is cool so this one is the 32 gig by one terabyte us model right now it's going for 1159 dollars if you're if it's your first time buying from geek buying there's an introductory offer i think you can get 60 dollars off so sign up for that and then they also have some deals up at the top clip all the different coupon codes and any other ones that I come across, I'll add into the description. But there's only a few places to buy this. There's geek buying, there's a few other drop shippers or from one X player directly. And the pricing actually in geek buying is pretty competitive here. So I like to see that sometimes these drop shippers really upcharge, but they've been pretty fair. And there's a whole bunch of stuff happening right here. Let's go all the way down to the specs. So it's that Zen 4, 8 core, 16 threads, Radeon 780M graphics, 8.4 inch IPS, it's 2560 by 1600 at a 30, 358 PPI, Wi Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, USB C4, which is great. That means you can plug an eGPU into this bad boy. 65.5 watt hour battery. So that equals, I was reading, up to a 17,000 milliamp hour batteries in here. They claim a nine hour battery life for simple desktop stuff. If you're doing intense gaming, they're claiming around three to four hours, which is damn good and probably why it's so heavy. It does weigh 709 grams and it's 12.7 inches across. So that's over a foot. Amazing. And I hope you could see my screen share. I don't know if I ever showed it. You guys said there's a timeout delay. Well, I'll use that delay to uh, drink some water. One other comparison we can make is to the Invernic RG Nano. So this is noticeably bigger than that handheld. This having a, yeah, it's a little bit bigger. The controller is twice as big as the Nano. A little bit heavier, of course. This is metal though, which is nice. And this does play up to PS1. It, this plays up to Switch and PS3 and, and games that come out tomorrow. How many RG Nanos? Yeah, that's a good question. Probably, I'd say, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 RG nanos big. It's about the size of a Discord plushie plus some badonk. It's about, uh, it's not the full size of this child's drawing that Raven Mage, our lead writer, drew for me and sent in the mail. I've delayed enough. It's time to play some games. I have a couple on here. Damn those humble bundles. What do we want to do? Celeste? Let's do some Celeste.
So we are not going to be stress testing the chip today. Again, there are so many videos out there. I would check out Russ from Retro Game Core, Joey's Retro Handhelds, the Retro Tech Dad, or other videos on our channel for this chip and Zoo's reviews on the way. Uh, we're just going to, again, play some Steam games I've installed and then just kind of get a feel for the ergonomics and everything. You want to see my Celeste skills? You don't want to see my Celeste skills. I'm not a... I'm not a Twitch streamer. I don't have gaming skills on camera. But I know a thing or two about handhelds, man. I'm missing the Pimax magnets. Indeed, iPod chips. Indeed. The biggest disappointment of this is no magnets, but this is the most powerful handheld and biggest handheld I've ever had in my office. In my studio, which a 10 year old asked me to name my studio D's Nuts. So there is a sign being made hanging above my door that's going to just say D's Nuts. No context. I don't know what he meant by that. I never asked, but you don't say no. To a, to a child's uh, request. Let's take a listen to these speakers, huh? Ben, can you enhance? Thanks, Ben. No, no, no. Other way. Other way. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Let's turn this up. Where's the volume button? Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh-oh. I don't know what's going on. I think I quit the gut. Not immediately apparent. Maybe I'm dumb, but I don't know. Oh, here's a volume in the control center. So there's no hardware volume key. That's a, that's a, that's a, uh, I don't love that. I don't love it. It's all right. We'll get through this. What just happened? Well, we're going to need it louder than that. Is that a max volume? Okay, let's see. Yeah, let's get the brightness down. We are at a 15 watt TDP, but I bet you could, we could run this at 10 watts, of course. Let's do save a little battery. Windows as clunky as ever. Joey would say that's a skills issue, Stubbs. And I'd say, you know what, so Joey? Uh, you're right. like the d-pad placement very much it's a little awkward to me let's get the let's get the screen better on camera it's a little bit bright here so let's turn that down a little clunky
need to remember not to look at the monitor while I'm doing this. There's a there's a delay. Look at the handheld itself. Is that a part of the game I haven't figured out how to get past yet? Maybe we drop down here. There we go. Ah, I am alive still. It's cool. Oh no, this isn't good. Oh. No. Oh. Oh. Who's good at Celeste? How do we get past this part? This, they designed this game for masochists. This isn't right. No. No. I never. Well, not the easiest controls for Celeste for me. Though I do have big, big thumbs. So, you know, buttons are decent sized. But I would have liked to see, I would have actually liked to see D-pad up top on this one. Or maybe the joystick set in a little bit, because it's a little bit far off to the left. As you can see, I mean, it's similar to the Ally. But I like how they put the D-pad a bit closer to the joystick here. And then on the Steam Deck, this is the ideal layout. You get the D-pad up very tip top on the left and then joystick set in by the screen here. This is the most ergonomic. This is okay. And this is a little bit of a reach. Hyperfixed. Uh, I agree with you. The D-pad and the Ally itself. The D-pad itself is not great. And from my, if you watch my live stream on the Ally, that was my main complaint with this device is the D-pad. But the placement of the D-pad I like. Still beats the Win 600 though. And the Win, and the Win 600, that's one where the D-pad up top is... Yeah, it's ideal for what it can do anyways. This thing is not getting hot, though. You have lots of room since the shell is so big. Now let's take a listen to the fan noise. It's pretty quiet. It is not too loud. All right, now... Let's move on to some Horizon Chase so we can listen to these speakers. <laughs> Joey, yeah, <laughs> it is. Greg, it deserves a wide body Surface Pro like kickstand and style support. It does. So it does have a kickstand built in. By the way, you can get a keyboard attachment. And you can get a stylus. There's a stylus add on it as well. It has 4,096 touch points or what have you. So. You know, these function buttons, you could probably program to be, you could program to be volume up and down. I'm, I'm sure you I'm sure you could. And this is, by the way, I haven't said this yet, but this is my first 1X device that I've ever used. So I'm not up to speed yet on all the nuances of their control center software. And maybe all of the little things that you need to do. This is simply out of the box, kind of a raw experience. I'm sure Zoo will be a little more in depth and uh, probably some firmware updates that need to get done here. I did send my first two hours after I turn, turned on the device of just installing Windows updates though. So it, it should be the latest Windows update. Firmware updates may have been included in that. And I seem to have lost the screen. There we go. Oh, okay.
them. Let's get those speakers. Jaylash, it's about eleven hundred and fifty dollars. Nice, nice bassy speakers. You know, the one it's fly, the more I look at it, the cooler it looks to me. H did a video on our channel here, and that thing looks freaking awesome. But I mean, this thing is not getting hot, and I always appreciate that. So having that extra space in the body allows it to put out a lot of power without heating it as much. The little handhelds, GPD Mini, One X Fly. You're gonna have to contend with what to do with the, such a little body and so much heat. Yeah, and you do have a little bezel here, so you do have branding One X Player, which isn't too bad. Wide bezels on the right and the left. Vibration feels good. There's also six axis rumble and gyro support. Vibration feels good. Feels articulated. When I'm holding it like this, the weight also doesn't feel too bad. You can play it in kickstand mode. Here's a question. Here's a question I have. Will it work if you take the controllers off and just start playing? No, it can't. So I'm not sure if you need the attachment. You probably need the attachment for it to work, and then it has a Bluetooth mode that'll connect to this. But as it stands, it does not work. I just wish, you know, I, I, ah, I wish we got the magnets. Okay. I wish these joysticks were concave too. These esports joysticks, mysterious esports joysticks, but they feel good. You know, they're they're a little bit bigger than Switch size to me. They have a rubber coating that kind of sticks your thumb to them, so it's grippy. Almost, almost sticky, almost, but not, but not quite. Just very rubber grippy. With a glossy D-pad, glossy face buttons. Love this white matte shell. D-pad itself, though, feels very good, despite placement to me feeling a little bit awkward. I'm in fourth place. Let's see if we can pull ahead. Nope. It's done. Without magnets, it's impossible to feel attracted to this device. Game Tech Talk, Clef Man. You nailed it on the head right there. It is tough. Let's move on. Speakers sound great. Screen looks good. You don't want the weather, you want to swap. I guess we swipe from the bottom so we get the taskbar. There's also the 
app switcher there. And then you can close it. You do that. Takes you back to the desktop. What? A gnome? Oh, ah! oh it's a love gnome. <laughs> I was worried for a second. <laughs> ah. Reviewers say the volume rocker is up top. It's next to the turbo button. Stop the stubs I accidentally pushed earlier. Yeah, so I get what you're saying. I understand that that should be volume up and down, but it's not by default. So I'm, I'm sure there's functionality you need to enable to uh, to get that. Sure. Uh, thanks. Hmm, let's see. What else we got on here? I think we got Mega Man. I Neo might. Yeah, there's no battery in the controllers. The controllers are super lightweight. They feel like the, the weight of an actual Switch Joy-Con. Hyperfixed, they did not send me the controller attachment. So I don't know. It looks pretty solid. Uh, they detached them so that you can put this into a laptop or tablet mode. So you can attach I a magnetic keyboard. I Albert's research must stop. They're, they're trying to make it an all-in-one situation. This is uh, Steam, just PC. This is x86. So you are going to contend with battery life, but having a 65 watt hour battery life, 17,000 milliamp hours, yeah, you're you're gonna be all right here. You're gonna be playing for a while.
actually getting a little bit of slowdown. We're gonna actually need to bump up the TDP a bit. Which should be this button right there. Getting 60 FPS. Yeah! Alright, let's see if that helps. So, doing the turbo button should bump it up to a 20 watts, I believe. We were running at 10 watts yeah. before. Mega Man 11 typically runs okay at 10 watt TDP, depending on the system. I think the ally pulls it ahead a bit at 10 watts. I'm trying to get the control center on the screen. One X. It's called the One X console. It's not liking me. There it is. Okay, we're at a. 10 watts still. So let's bump that up to a 20. We're gonna need that for Counter-Strike anyways. Some other options here. We have the CPU max status, so you can turn turbo on and off. We have fan mode, 50% has been okay. It's getting a little bit warm, but not hot. You can set your vibration level. So let's just crank that bad boy up to, does that say fierce? Yeah, there's fierce modes. We're, we're gonna switch it to fierce mode, that's cool. It's actually running at 1280 by 720 right now. And let's bump that up to the full 2.5K resolution. What else we got here? Volume, brightness. The LEDs supposedly turn on and off, but the button is not working for that. So maybe there's more to be done in the software. One key run button. Hardware info, RTSS. That's cool, man. Yeah. It's brightness down even further. It does get very bright, by the way. So if you if you wanted to see just how low it gets. It's still pretty bright on the lowest setting, and on the highest setting, it is ungodly bright. Take that, little yellow hat man. Love the slow motion they added in Mega Man 11. So this control's good, the face buttons feel really good to me. It's comfortable, that's the thing. Having a big handheld like this, you can't deny that it's not comfortable. Ah, don't take that as my end all be all Mega Man skills, please. Yeah, weight, weight's actually an odd distribution there, Joey. So you have these super lightweight sides, almost paper, paper light. And then you have this crazy, hefty, heavy mid. I mean, this is something you could use to fight off a criminal or a burglar. One and the same, really. Well, it's for the courts to decide. But it's, uh, it's an interesting weight. It definitely takes the weight off if you open up this kickstand. Then you can play like this. Um, that actually is very comfortable. I could see myself playing like that for a while. Now all the weight's off. 
and you just have these light controllers, which are nice. And that's why it'd be nice so you can pop these off there, put on the controller attachment, pop this in, maybe even hook this up to your TV. And you got a powerhouse you can take on the go. Click the button on the right hand side. The button. The multiple buttons on the right hand side. Turn on auto TDP. Interesting. So just I, I mean maybe it's an issue with this particular unit, but these buttons do nothing. All three of these buttons appear, at least as of now, to do nothing. So I guess there is an auto TDP mode. I do see the fan is an automatic mode right now, which is good. Hmm. And I wanted to play Counter-Strike, but it says it has 40 minutes. So we're actually going to skip that. Zoo, um, uh, Zoo, if you can show off some FPS in your video, I'm going to mail this to him first thing tomorrow. And uh, he's going to get to getting a video out for you all. So the haptics are nice and strong in this, especially now that we're in fierce mode. I was noticing that just now. They're definitely... This is made for a PC handheld connoisseur. And a 1X handheld, 1X fly, 1Net player, all the same brand. They really cater towards sort of that, that upper echelon uh, elite gamer who wants to have a Steam Deck maybe, but they really want the ultimate power and they want to do everything on it. Uh, this is for that person, I believe. And this could be, I mean, with the power in here, the battery life, all the attachments, the stylus, the keyboard attachment, you could make this into your one and done device. I mean, you could definitely make this into your main PC, add on an external monitor maybe. Uh, you could plug in an eGPU up here. And this could be it. For me, not this is a review, but for me, my takeaway is this is not it for me. Okay, uh, this is... This is a lot. It's 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 probably too heavy uh, for me, even even using around the house. So this is something I would probably only use docked to my TV, and I'd like to have that controller attachment, and then use it in that way. And at that point, I probably wouldn't use these controllers anyways. I would probably just use a Xbox controller, or a similar, maybe a eight bit Do controller. And as far as emulation, just to give you a sneak peek, I haven't loaded anything on here, but this is gonna play everything every other 7840U handheld can do with emulation. It's going to knock your socks off all the way up to PS3. It really can handle pretty much anything you can throw at it. You're going to be 5Xing, 6Xing PS2. And yeah, we're just going to stop that download. Man, that's frustrating that I can't get the 1X console to come up when I want it to. I strongly believe Albert's research must stop. All right. I'll just leave it right there. You know, the heat on this, though, has never got bad. If we wanted to get out our handy dandy doodad. Hey, Dan, where's the doodad? Okay. Uh, Ban said he had to use it to take the temperature of his grandmother, who has uh, fallen ill. It's all right. I don't need that anyways. Oh, oh I guess I guess she got better. Uh, thank you. Okay, so 
If we want to take a quick look at temps, let's get a baseline for my office studio. These nuts here. These nuts are running around 73.5 ambient temperature, 87.6 on the screen. The sides, I don't expect to be very hot. Yeah, they're about baseline anyways, since they got nothing in them. We do it right at the vent, up to 93, but yeah, this thing's staying pretty cool and I, I appreciate that. It really does need to be stress tested a little bit more to get a full accurate temperature reading, but I'm happy it didn't get warm so far. I think with that Wi-Fi 6E, you're going to see Game Pass on this do just awesome. But I have to say, guys, you know, for over $1,100, the Rise or the uh, the Z1 Extreme chipset that's in the ROG Ally, it's just going to be probably a better way to go for half the price. I mean, you can get this for 700 you can get as cheap as 600 if you get this this regular z1 model it's smaller it's more compact and if you don't mind losing a little bit of performance you get the best ui and control setup here with the steam deck of course from valve i love this thing there are plenty of other options even if you want a big if you want a big handheld like this you could get the the tjd uh, what is it? The T101, the, you know, giant, giant screen, avocado boy over there. You could get the Ionio Kun, which is a little bit more money than this, but that thing looks awesome because it has touch pads. And then, of course, lastly, the one I'm waiting on and I'm excited for, even though it's just as big as this, I'm still excited to see what it can do. The Legion Go by Lenovo, starting at $699, you get most of the same specs. You do not get a variable refresh display. So people who are excited for that aren't going to love the Legion Go. Yeah, Dead Space would be fun on here. Legion Go, I, I feel like where you get nearly all of this, but for half the price, it's it's so tough to justify. I'm waiting on Geek Buying to send us coupons for this that we can include for you all. Uh, if they can get some really gnarly coupons like they did for the for the Win 4, because they we were able to bring the Win 4 down to like $630 after their coupons, which is a fair price for that device. Really nice. Still my favorite Windows handheld. Uh, it's a lot smaller, you know, 5-inch screen and all that, but... Or 6-inch screen, 5.5-inch, something like that. Um, that one's a lot smaller, and the price point's right. This is just simply too expensive. This is just too darn expensive. I don't mind that it's heavy. I don't mind a lot of the other things, but you can't. <sighs> yeah. Uh... Oh, th oh, thanks, Raven. Six inch. Yeah, six inch. Y you can't charge $1,100, $1,200 for a Windows handheld in 2023 when you have these first party brands putting out the same stuff for way less. Sure, they have deals, they have partnerships, with, which allows them to bring it at a cheaper price. So the only people who are going to be buying this are the really the very niche who, where there's some feature on this, maybe that the that the first party devices like the Lenovo's, like the uh, Asus ROG allies don't give you. You know, there are some features in here that I imagine I mean, it's simple, but just the kickstand is really nice. I, I, that's a nice little touch. It's probably my favorite feature on this. It sure aren't these controllers or the magnets or the LEDs. The LEDs are subtle, though. They're okay. 8.4 inch screen on this, though. It is nice looking, and this could be your main daily driver PC. Like I said, it's great for Excel spreadsheets. It's, uh, well, if you have the keyboard on, it's it's great for solitaire. So let's not forget about that. Well, if you are interested in this bad boy, we do have it in our description right now. So it is, you know, $1,160. 
there are some coupons you can get it down i, I think it's cheap as just 1100 even make sure if you're a first time buyer of geek buying uh, they have good shipping uh, they generally have pretty good customer service in my experience but if you're a first time buyer i think they give you a 60 dollars bonus to use so you if you're going to get a big handheld use that bonus on something like this hi cupola are you qpla or cupola like your like your pfp okay so stay tuned on here i'm going to be going over the lenovo legion go on launch day which should be here at the end of the month october 31st on halloween it'll be a spooky live stream and with that, I wanted to say thank you all so much for watching. You are the reason that we keep doing what we're doing. Ah, heck, we'd probably do it if no one watched. I just like talking about these handhelds. I'm very thankful that anybody wants to even listen to me yabbering on about them. Uh, but I want to thanks, thank all of our patrons and subs. You guys really fuel what we're able to do here. And uh, uh, we really appreciate you month after month, giving your hard-earned dollars to our little organization here in our community. Say hi to us in our Discord, discord.gg forward slash retro handhelds. Until next time, this is Stubbs with Retro Handhelds. Take care of your handhelds, everybody. And uh, take care of each other. Have a good one. <laughs>